I'm Nancy Winder Wilson. My father was Captain Raymond Winder and he was captain of the Hampton Road Steamboat when I was born that ran from Smithfield to Newport News and Norfolk. It was their link to the outside world. The way he became captain of the steamboat, he was first mate. He was 29 years old. And the captain had a heart attack on the way back from Norfolk to Smithfield. In the middle of the trip, he had a heart attack and died. And they, my father had to take charge of the steamboat, and they went into Battery Park, called the doctor who declared Captain Gar dead, and my husband took the steam, my father took the steamboat on in. Well, they had a meeting of the board to decide what they were going to do, and his mentor wanted him to be made captain of the steamboat, but they said, oh, no, he's much too young. 29 is too young to be captain of a steamboat. But his mentor prevailed, and he did become captain of the Hampton Roads and was as long as it ran. In 19, about 1928 and 1929, they built the James River Bridge. And when they did, shortly thereafter, the steamboat stopped running because it was much quicker to go over the bridge. And from there, we went, I'm not sure exactly where we went next, but at one time, we were on the eastern shore, and he was captain of a ferry boat called the Chelsea. And I do remember that. This was before I started to school, but I remember one time we were crossing the Chesapeake Bay, and he was carrying a circus to the other side of the bay, and in the middle of the trip, the terrible storm came up, and the animals got seasick, and they were restless. The people got seasick. My mother was seasick. My sister was seasick. And so nobody was watching us. My brother and I were running all over the boat having a ball. But we made that safely all right. The animals made it. And then we moved to Delaware, where he was captain of a ferry that ran from Wilmington, and I'm not sure where, to New Jersey, I think, for the DuPont. And then in 1938, the Buxton Lines bought two steamboats, had them refitted. One was called the Richmond, and the other one was called the Norfolk. And my father was made captain of the Norfolk and stayed on that until World War II. And when I was a child, on Friday afternoon, when we would get out of school, we would load up in the car and go down to the dock and get on the boat and go to Norfolk. It was an overnight trip. We'd leave Richmond about five o'clock, have dinner, and we'd go all night. It stopped at City Point in Hopewell. It stopped at Old Point Comfort, and then it would go to Norfolk. The dock was down where Waterside is now. And we would have all day in Norfolk. Sometimes we'd go to Ocean View. Sometimes we'd go to the movies in town. And Daddy would give us a dollar, and we'd just spend the whole day with our dollar. And then we would come back. I remember at times when it would be foggy. I loved to hang out in the, in the uh, pilot house. And they would let me blow the whistle. And when it was foggy, they blew the whistle constantly to make sure there was nothing coming. And I liked to do that. And we would blow the whistle for them to open the James River Bridge. And I liked to do that, too. Uh, they communicated with the engine room by a speaking tube that was in the pilot house. You blew into it, and in the engine room, they could hear you and would answer. I mean, they didn't have any radios, and they would let me blow into it. They wouldn't let me give them instructions, but they would let me blow into it, and they would sometimes let me steer the wheel with assistance, I'm sure. And my sister and I had free range of the boat except below deck. We were not allowed in the engine room, and we were not allowed in the captain's cabin very often. We did go in there with close supervision, but we loved to hang out in the galley with the cook, and he would tease us, and we would tease him, and we had a real good time. And then when World War II started, my father left there and went to work for the government, and he became a 
a harbor pilot for the Navy in Norfolk until he retired in, in 1967.